Hello, I wanted to show off an experiment I did today with the Fergulator NES emulator. I added a JavaScript debugger, which is pretty cool. You can follow along on my fork on GitHub, Fergulator. Now you can see here that I have Super Mario Brothers running. And it's loaded up a file called debug.js. And in that file, I can actually observe certain events as they happen and respond to this. And so here, pause and unpause. If I go back here and I pause or unpause, you can see the output here in the console log. So I can change this dynamically. So say we uh, comment out unpause and change the text for unpause. So we'll reload it. And now you can see that only the pause events are coming through. So this is pretty neat. Uh, we're going to use this to do some automated debugging on Mario's Y position to try and figure out which RAM spot uh, that is using. So I've set up uh, a few helper functions and whatnot, but uh, the important ones are we've got init to set things up, uh, which I'll need to reset the machine to get. There we go. Uh, and debug mode, so if I press M, uh, it sends the debug mode event, and so this just lets me cycle through a counter, uh, which pretty much lets me do a bit of a state machine. I've created my own callback watch, which uh, inside vblank, which is every frame, this gets called, and then every five frames, I call watch. This is just to limit the amount of output I'm putting on the console, just to not overwhelm things. And then here within this vblank callback, so every frame, this is where the magic happens. So we're switching off our counter. Uh, if it's zero, we're not really doing anything. If it's one, we're going to start recording all changes to RAM, every frame. Down here, we're going to first record the entire state of RAM. And then on every subsequent frame, we're going to try and find anything that has changed. We're going to keep track of those. And then after a while, we're going to switch and say, okay, well, we're just going to stop keeping track of what changed and of those that changed, what now continue changing even though we've stopped. So if we're in the Y position, this means we start recording changes when he's jumping. And when he stops jumping, then we filter down that set by things that continue to change even though the jumping has stopped. And then in mode three, we're not doing any, we're not recording anything, but we're just going to take the uh, keys the, we're going to take the RAM locations we identified and just dump them out the screen so we can get the final ones by just visual inspection. So that was a lot of talking. I'm going to go through it again in real time. So here we have Mario and we've got the latest debug. So we can jump, we can jump. I'm going to jump, pause it, jump into uh, mode one. And you can see now that of the two kilobytes of potential RAM, 77 of them have changed. And so we'll jump down and we'll land him on the ground. Now 85 have changed. Now we'll switch into mode two. This is the one. So now that he stopped jumping, we want to filter this down. So of those 85, about half of them continued changing even though we stopped. So we're down to 46 now. I'm gonna run sideways as well for a little bit. And you can see we've now winnowed it down to 16 static, which is pretty good. That's, that's pretty low. So now we're gonna jump to mode three and I'll unpause. And you can see here that this is now just dumping out the, hex, the RAM positions to screen. So if I jump, you can see them change. Now there's quite a few there. So I'm just going to filter that down. Uh, a lot of these are going to be mirrors. So normally I'm just looking at the first one that's in RAM. So just sort them and slice out the first couple. Jump back here. Uh, whoops. We've got... There's the brackets. We'll reload it. Okay. And pause. So now we've got some few ones to, to work with. So the interesting ones here. So this is actually sorted by string, not numerically, which is kind of annoying. But if you look up to the lowest one on the right here, 206, you can see it's at 176 now. When we jump, it goes down and then back up to 176. So this looks pretty promising. If I go and stand on this block here, you can see it's now up at 112 rather than 176. 
And if I jump up on this block as well, it goes up to 48. So that seems like it could be a good candidate for his Y position. This 159 one as well is also interesting. It's zero when he's on the ground. Then when we jump, it goes to 250 something. And on the way down, I'll, uh, I'll pause it so you can see. So it's 250 something, 250 something. And then on the way down, zero, one, four, four. And then when he hits the ground, zero. So this is probably Y velocity. So to test this, we can come back here. Uh, I'm just going to kill our vblank function. And then I'm just gonna hook into our debug, debug mode. Uh, so I'll start by writing 206. I'm just gonna write uh, 100 to 206, which is a Y position. And we do this with it whenever I press our debug mode button. So we'll come over here, we'll reload, we'll unpause, and now I'll press debug. And you can see that every time I press it, his Y position changes. That's pretty cool. Let's also check Y velocity. So this is the other one we identified. I'll try uh, setting it to 250, which should be a pretty big jump. Come back here, we'll reload, unpause, and then press it. And there we go. We get a jump, which is pretty cool. We can go over and we can do crazy things, put it on 240. Now this one should be big. Reload, bang, send him off the screen. So that's pretty neat. That's the sort of things you can do with JavaScript debugging.